this video, I just want to take a few moments and read a little bit and talk a little bit about the Battle of Actium. Here's a nice little page on The Ohio State University that talks about it in some more historical detail. Here's, here's from an essay. Uh, I want us to think about, remember with chance and fortune and what the soothsayer says to Antony in Act 2, Scene 3 about how Octavius Caesar is always going to win in fortune and always going to win in chance. Uh, let's, I'm going to read a little bit from this essay. Here we may ask ourselves, why does Antony accept Caesar's later dare to fight at sea in Actium if he is convinced that the young leader will triumph in the end no matter what he does? There are three possible answers to this question. The first is that Antony must have forgotten about the palm reader's warning altogether since much time passes before Actium. The second possibility is that he is still remembers but persists in daring Caesar out of pride and a desire to display his manhood and military abilities before his beloved Cleopatra and his comrades. The third possibility is that he could not resist the temptation to accept the challenge. Remember that previous scene, by sea, by sea, we'll fight by sea, even though everyone's telling him not to. Especially from Caesar, since Antony is known for taking risks. Uh, nevertheless, Antony does not actually mind losing the Battle of Actium, for he asserts that if we fail, we then can do it by land. We can fight by land. If that is this case, then why does he not continue fighting Caesar by land immediately after he loses? One may guess that it must have been his preoccupation with regret and overwhelming feelings of shame and guilt that hindered him from taking any further steps after losing the battle by acting on a whim. However, rashness and doting are only part of the story. The other part lies in the key word fear that goes unexplained by Antony in his speech after his vanquishment. And this is going to be in the next scene we read, Act 3, Scene 11, Lines 11 through 15. Anthony, oh, I follow that I blush to look upon. My very hairs do mutiny, for the white reprove the brown for rashness, and they them for fear and doting. Why doesn't Anthony dare to look upon Cleopatra? Is she not the one who informs his decision to take such an irreversible course of action? Why doesn't he renounce his love for her and choose to go back to his duty and his wife Octavia? On the other hand, what is the significance of the word fear? If doting and rashness are the sole reasons behind Antony flying after Cleopatra, why then do we see fear as another reason coupled with the word doting? Further, if we pay attention to the word order, we may find it puzzling that fear precedes doting. Is it not his excessive passion for Cleopatra that ruined his military plans? Or is it his undefined fear that leads to this surrender? And why should Antony be afraid if the odds are going in his favor in the fight against Caesar, as Scarus affirms? And that's in Act 3, uh, Scene 10, remember? By identifying Antony's fear, we can answer these questions and further understand what happens to him off the stage. <clears throat> here's kind of an here's here's a, a few thoughts on Antony and the Battle of Actium. Assuming that Antony still remembers the soothsayer's warning about Caesar. Uh, the war episode goes as follows. Before Cleopatra sails away from the battlefield, the fight was going well for Antony, as Scarus declares. Remember in Act 3, Scene 10, the midst of the fight, when Vantage, like a pair of twins, appeared both as the same, or rather ours the elder. Yet by the time Antony learns of Cleopatra's retreat, he suddenly remembers the soothsayer's message comprising three points. First, Antony's guardian spirit becomes afraid to guard him around Octavius. Second, the former is destined to lose in any game, even if the odds are in his favor, as long as it is against Caesar. Finally, Anthony must hide at Egypt again, make space enough between him and the young triumvirate. Struck by this unpleasant memory, Anthony sees Cleopatra's departure, not only as a portent of failure in the war, but also as a symbol of safety and refuge from Caesar. Now that he realizes Caesar is going to succeed despite fortune's apparent smile on Antony, the latter is cornered between leaving his men behind and following Cleopatra forward. Abandoning the soldiers would be rash, yet keeping up the fight while knowing its inevitable end would be pointless as well. Nevertheless, ordering his navy to pull back while they are at an advantage and close to winning would be illogical for the troops. Thus, leaving it all to chance and following Cleopatra is the only way to avoid facing the fear of witnessing his warriors collapsing and eventually suffering defeat at the hands of a mere boy, Octavius. Remember, he's only like 23 who has not the slightest respect for Antony's age and experience. Going back to Antony's sad speech, everything makes sense. 
Cleopatra's withdrawal turns out to instigate more fear than doting in Anthony is evidenced by the word order and the association of fear with white hairs. That is, they do not only stand for Anthony's old age, but also for his fear of Caesar's luck and spirit. Uh, so, Anthony's emotional behavior is consistent with his earlier conduct when he tries to shy away from his beloved instead of facing and berating her. Finally, and significantly, we can infer from Anthony's last words in the scene, Fortune knows we scorn her most when most she offers blows, that he realizes it was Fortune that played a key role in his unfortunate decline, not Cleopatra. He doesn't blame Cleopatra, it's Fortune. Remember, Fortune and Chance. Thus, we can conclude that Antony's insistence upon the fact that Cleopatra should have expected him to follow her does not carry words of reproach. Rather, such repetition expresses how much he regrets his choice, not only because he lost in the war, but also because he set a bad example to his servicemen. This is going to be in Act 3, Scene 11, when he says, I have fled myself and have instructed cowards to run and show their shoulders. All right, so a little bit, that's Antony. You know, it's all about fortune and chance, and Antony doesn't blame Cleopatra. Let's look at why, briefly and quickly, why Cleopatra flees the battle. 